Would you guys like to learn how to start a successful restaurant from someone who owns a restaurant that's generated $1.7 million in revenue last year? Today we're here with Carlo, the owner of Don Luchos. He's a regular on our Upflip channel. What are you going to teach us today? Yeah, today we'll go over a few things that will help you run a successful restaurant, like good operating systems, how to be cost effective in your kitchen, and marketing strategies that will help you get to your customers. And a ton more, so keep watching. This is going to be fun. All right, Carlo, for those that haven't seen our previous episodes with you, give us a brief explanation on why and when you started Don Luchos. Yeah, so Don, Don Luchos started in 2013, it started as a food cart. The uh, reason I started is because I love food, I love to be able to share my culture with people, so I think through food is like the best way to do that. I mean, I'm really passionate about food and service industry, so. Diving more into the specifics of operating a restaurant, how do you refine your process as you grow, as you continue to expand? Yeah, I think it's very important that as you grow, continue to expand, always have knowledge of, you know, how much each plate is costing you, how much is your labor costing you, so you can, you know, adapt prices adequately and you can continue to have that growth that you want every year. So what do I need to do to do that? Is it hiring a person? Is it having the right software? Give us more specifics. It's a combination of both. Some people like doing it. I personally don't like doing it. So I hire out and technology for sure. You want to have the right software. It'll so who do you easier. have? You have an accountant or CPA? I have an accountant. What kind of software? Yeah, I have an accountant. Then I have a financial strategist that works with me day to day. So what's new for Don Lucho since last time we interviewed you? And how is 2021 as a business owner? The food truck started getting activated again. We kind of lost our food truck program for a while due to everybody working from home. Mm -hmm. You know, not many people are leaving their house. So we, we kind of stopped that area and then and, and we're revamping it now. Like towards the end of 2021, we started getting active again. And then 2022, we, we have a nice schedule already set up. So that's like one of our better marketing uh, tools, I would mm -hmm. say, because right. it's you know, you're going to be able to try the food, you're going to be able to... And it's all over town. All over town, right? We're moving around the city, so the whole idea is to get you here at the restaurant, you know. Any different uh, features, experiences, services that you've implemented since last time? Well, we have our ceviche bar that we're uh, making it more and more active each month as we go by. Probably in the spring, we're going to have it full throttle. So it's kind of like, you know, a new concept within our restaurant that we're going to start moving around and hey maybe one day it'll come to life and we'll have an actual business called ceviche bar you know cool. be one of the other concepts that gets created within don luchos so. well last time i gotta tell you you didn't have this awesome branding i don't remember you wearing it and <laughs> yeah. branding yourself so that's yeah, yeah. that's another thing that i see that's different two it, stars for two years of the of the restaurant nice mm -hmm. so next year it'll be three this year will be three yeah <laughs> What's your monthly revenue today as it compares to last year as well? Uh, yeah, average like anywhere 140,000 in sales, uh, about 170 a wow. month. This time? The, yeah, for was 2021. It, was it different last year? The year before, uh, yeah. 2020? It was like right around 100,000 a month. Okay. Yeah. So you're growing at a, what, 20, 30%? At least that's uh, the goal? Yes, right around there, yeah. Cool. Looking back at 2021, how mm -hmm. does your revenue break down between food truck, restaurant, and then catering? Yeah, so 2021, all restaurant. Like, there's like barely any movement with our food truck. We used to be yeah. focused on offices, catering. So we had some, but not very much at all. A lot of our catering was uh, catering to office buildings as well. So nobody's in the office anymore. But this year, we're anticipating uh, more weddings to be taking place. And then we're active with the food truck like three to five times a week. So that all is starting to come back to life. Hope it'll be thankfully. much better this year. I hope right. so, yeah, and okay. I believe so. It's okay. good. When you grow, how do you balance the quality of the food, the quality of the service, and everything else? Yeah, I think it's very important to recognize, uh, you know, the days or the seasons that you're the busiest, so you can have the appropriate amount of staff that you can you can maybe shorten your menu on the on the busier days where you know that you know, your kitchen's starting to get kind of clustered with uh, having too much stuff on the menu. So mm -hmm. we do that. We do that every Friday, Saturday is like the peak of our sales uh, every week. So we make sure to put a menu on, on in place that's going to actually help us be effective and be able to serve our customers. Okay. What else? Also, I think uh, as you grow, you know, it's very important to put the right pillars in place I, so you can start. My mom told me never to interrupt, but I think we should leave this as a hack. So keep watching and you'll show that with us later. How about All that? Right. Absolutely. When you first opened Don Luchos, what mistakes do you think you made that you wish you would have done differently with what you know now? I feel like everything that happened, you know, you start learning from it. And right. 
There weren't huge Any ones specific? where I just like kicked myself in the head. I think I would have kicked myself in the head if I didn't take the jump to become a restaurant. So oh, well said. I feel like it, it happened at the right time. And then, you know, it's just a, a learning experience. We didn't have this patio uh, before we created it during the pandemic. I thought about doing a smaller patio before. That would have been a mistake that I avoided. Uh -huh. Luckily, you know, I've decided to make it bigger because of the shutdown. And I knew everybody was going to want to be eating outside. But I mean, there's, there's so many that I could mention. Anything uh, that tops the mind, just out of curiosity for us, you know, our probably, viewers listening. Probably doing the, the due diligence and learning a POS system that would be adequate for mm -hmm. the amount of transactions we're gonna be doing in swiping cards. So it would save me quite a bit of money. Important to invest in that research before committing to something. Absolutely, okay. yeah, absolutely. That's, that's important. You guys check out our podcast as well, upflip.com forward slash podcast. We dive into more specific questions such as these. Check it out right now. Carla, I want to talk more about opening a restaurant specifically. So tell us a little bit about what a soft opening is and what benefit it has for a restaurant owner. Yeah, I think soft opening is probably one of the, the, the more important phases because it allows you to interact with your customers and also dial in everything from your service to your kitchen and what menu you want to present. I did a soft opening for about a month. So it's a time for trial and error. It's a time for, for you to figure things out, you know? But you're not serving people for free, right? You're no, sort of like not you're, officially you're, open, but you're open to... Yeah, I mean, you're officially open for business. Okay. I mean, at least that's the way we used it. <laughs> so we, we were officially open for business for a month, and, and we had different hours we were operating. And then when we finally opened, our, our hours were from 12 to 9 instead of just 5 to 9 every day, you know? So we had, like, limited time frames of service while we figure stuff out, uh, while we're hiring, while we're training. You don't do that in just a matter of two, three days, I you know? See. So you're figuring out how the flow of the kitchen is gonna work, you know, how your your outside service team is gonna work. So it's time for trial and error and dialing yeah. everything in. So without it, it could be chaos if you just go ahead and hard open. Yeah, and then, and then if you don't say, you know, grand opening and you don't use that cover that you have for soft opening, you're you know, people might come in and they don't know, you know, and they'll be like, oh, this place sucks. You know, but you just say you're two Ouch. days open, you know, they go leave you a terrible review on Yelp, but little do they know that like three days ago you opened and you're just gotcha. still trying to figure everything out. Gotcha. So I think restaurants should definitely use that soft opening phase to figure stuff out and let your customers know it's a soft opening because you're still trying to figure everything out. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Guys, we'd love to hear from you on your experience with soft opening. Any tips, tricks, suggestions, please comment below. Love hearing from you. Let's switch to social media. You're huge on social media. You've got more than 10,000 followers on Instagram, which is awesome. What posts do restaurant owners need to focus on posting? What, what posts do the best? I like teaming up with local influencers that are going to restaurants, you know, okay. that are in the foodie community. Um, I'll invite them over. We, we will do collaborations quite often. And when we do those like type of giveaways, it really helps to create traction and people commenting. And, you know, a lot, a lot of the rules are usually going to be like tag a friend, you know, or like mm -hmm. sharing your stories. So you're tapping into all these different, you know, groups of people that you may not have access to when you're doing that. So yep. those work really great. Collabs. I okay. think uh, Instagram, you know, uh, has come out probably going to say like the reels is like, the type of video that you do and uh, they're, they're trying to compete with TikTok because TikTok's like the big one right now. Yeah. So those organically get a lot of movement more than a regular post would. So do you run social media? Or I do, do you... myself. I actually enjoy it. You do? Okay. <laughs> but I do have, I do have during the busy time of the year, I have people that help me create content. But in the end, I'm the one, you know, nobody's gonna be able to say like me. So I'm, I'm the one behind you know, the posts of how, you know, we're gonna structure it, what we're saying out to our followers and the community. But as far as like posting daily, posting five times a day, any tricks there, any suggestions? Uh, yeah, I mean, best? I found I found uh, to be fruitful more like late late at night, or I don't know if you do have a lunch special, like do it right before lunch, maybe like two, three hours early, because you might've already set your mind at 10 p.m. or 10 a.m. what you wanna have for lunch. So be, like yeah. maybe like 9 a.m., you know, I catch you early when you're like, huh, I'm kinda, I'm gonna get lunch today, where should I go? Mm -hmm. And you're on your phone and boom, it pops up. <laughs> right so it's like okay. right before what you want to advertise so if you're advertising for lunch say three hours early if you're advertising for dinner same deal like three hour rule the algorithms can show you this people when they get home they're usually on their phone so anywhere from like eight to ten mm -hmm. if you're you know trying to talk about some sort of promotion throughout the week that you're gonna have you know you can probably catch a lot of your okay. fan base around that time that's cool yeah You've got great branding. Curious, how important is it for you as a restaurant owner and anything else that you'd like to add? Yeah, I think it's very important for, you know, to, for your logo to show up somewhere and, and people, you know, be able to relate to what you stand for. And for us, you know, we're bringing Peru to you. We have a flag there. Looks um, really good. 
have a food cart in the back that we started with and you know so we want people to know that we're serving food we're doing some sort of service that has to do with Peru and uh, it's very important you know people to know what you stand for and what you're doing awesome okay um, by the way you guys today's sponsor is trademark factory a one-stop shop for trademark registration services for a fixed fee Licensed attorneys will handle your trademark filing to registration. And if it doesn't get approved, guess what? You get all of your money back. So click the link in the description below to learn more about Trademark Factory and how they can protect your brand. And I will probably be using that service because that's something I need to do. There you go. <laughs> Tell us how you set up your online ordering portal and what system do you use to manage and host it? Yeah, we had a couple different services. I did the study of which one is best and uh, I ended up going with Clover. Mm -hmm. So Clover online ordering, it's compatible with the website structure that we're using so people can actually like do their online ordering and we'll, we will get the tickets here in the kitchen. So did you do it all yourself or? Uh, the, no, the I, uh, it, was, it was, you know, a lot of studying that had to be made. So I, I had my manager dedicate himself for a whole week, Oh wow! Um, roughly a whole week to learn the system, start migrating all our menu items from our old POS system to our new one. Mm -hmm. uh, so it takes time, you know? So it's definitely uh, something that you want to think about maybe dedicating one of your employees to learning the system and that way you can learn from them. And I also did a lot of, uh, a little bit of research as well, so yeah. Is it worth it? It's definitely worth it if you're going to save $20,000 and then. <laughs> okay. So we did, the reason why we switched was uh, we were using Square before and their, their average percentage rate was, was higher. And when we ran our same numbers straight across the board, from one POS system to the other, so Square to Clover, we ended up saving like wow. 20 grand. One thing you mentioned about free advertising, free forms advertising, is this food bloggers, right? These influencers on Instagram. So how yeah. do you tips, tricks, suggestions on connecting with them? You have to start browsing like Instagram or Facebook or whatever, TikTok, whatever you plan on, on using and kind of do your due diligence and see how many of these people actually have like an organic following that is what you need to be after, you know. But so. if you're not big, I mean, they may not want to waste your time on you. Can that be a possibility or? Yeah, that's true. I mean, it doesn't hurt to ask, you know. So the more you ask, okay. the more, you know, you can start scheduling and you got to reach out. Yeah, you got to get out there. Most people aren't going to say no to free food. True. But <laughs> and, and it does help your bottom line, right? Your business, your yeah, your, yeah, absolutely. Your brand absolutely. and everything. Yeah, because they have a crowd, you know, you want their, their crowd to be aware of what you're doing. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's a cool collaboration. You've had some amazing people collaborate with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had quite a few. It always helps out. Uh, with the latest one we did, we did a three $100 giveaways with uh, Seattle Foodie Adventure. He has 123,000 mm -hmm. followers Whoa. on Instagram. The video he did has over 80,000 views. Dang, that's uh, crazy. For Holy real, God. yeah. And, and we did it twice, actually. We did one like about three months ago, and then he reached out. He's like, hey, how about we do another one? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, so that, that video had like 90K views, cool. and we were super busy during the whole weekend so it definitely it definitely brings a lot of traction your way so what would be your one piece of advice to small business owners struggling to build reliable staff especially in this season of life right yeah it's definitely one of, one of the toughest times i think but i think you know like what we do here is we, we treat everybody like family you know we make sure that we keep a place so that people can get along and a happy place a work, happy workplace and you know you try to take it day by day and make sure that you know you're, you're keeping your staff happy with what you're offering okay. uh, competitive wages too we do tip pooling here so okay. you know certain people wanted certain shifts because they knew there was more tip mm. money involved you know, tips That's not here good get for morale. No, no, and I think uh, that really helps out. Like once I did the tip pooling, I think, you know, it just keeps all areas pretty happy. So if I ask somebody, hey, do you want to work the the morning shift? They're not gonna be like, oh no, because I'm not making any tips there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like everybody's getting at the end of the day, at the end of payroll, whatever came in as tips is gonna get distributed to, to everybody. Well, not evenly, but there's a different percentages. But uh, you know, okay. at least in the terms of like, if you talk about the servers, you know, like just because you're, you did the morning shift twice in a week. It doesn't mean that you're going to get a significantly less than somebody that's working a busy, you know, night shift. So nice. I okay. think that, that really helped a lot to keep people from wanting to pick and choose what okay. they want to work. Yeah. Well, that's a good tip for you guys. What are some crucial systems and processes that need to be in place before you open the doors to your restaurant? Internally, in terms of, you know, managing staff, uh, I have, you know, on a busy day, I'll have about six, 12, about 13, 14 people 
you know, on a, on a busy Friday, Saturday evening. I need to schedule these guys, you know, okay. and make sure they come in at the right time and know if they came in late, if that's an issue, I need to start addressing it. Mm -hmm. But have software for your clocking in, clocking out, and What's software, yours? I use Sling. It's Sling. called Sling, yeah. Okay. And that helps, you know, schedule people out. So you know, you know, if, like, if you start doing this verbally with 24 people, it's just a headache. It's like, well, wait a minute, did I ask so-and-so <laughs> to come in today? Or, you know, so but if you have right. some sort of software, or even if it's like, you know, manually done, it, okay. it helps a lot to know what what your staffing looks like each day how much you're spending for each day right what as else well so in terms of systems processes obviously you know like for for charging and 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 clover is way more restaurant friendly because mm -hmm. i get to see my tables i get to see i see the other one was kind of more just like you create a ticket and then but you know i, I just like more restaurant focus this area that we found in clover so it's a worthy investment at the beginning yeah yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, the, the more the more uh, software you can implement to help you, you know, in terms of uh, managing your inventory, managing your your staff, and and, and all that's going to be a lot better in the future when you start growing. So I just want to follow up in terms of systemizing everything within a restaurant setting. Give us an example of finding an issue and and resolving it or fixing it. Yeah, I think it's very important to keep track of, of your numbers, you know, uh, very simple like, hey, if your your payroll and your cost of goods that you're getting is higher than what your revenue is coming in, that, that's a huge red flag. But if you want to even bring it down to the T, you definitely want to keep track of everything, your cost per plate, you know, how many are you selling of, of, of each plate, which ones are your best sellers, do you have those dialed in at the right price? So definitely want to keep track. That's going to be your first red flag, I think. First one. Okay, so yeah. it's easy in a restaurant to think you're making money, but in fact you're losing. Is that possible? Yeah, it's very easy. With so much going on, you have cost of labor, you have cost of goods sold. Those things start getting out of whack a little bit, and you won't even really know because the cash flow might still be coming in, but in reality you're actually not making money or maybe even losing money. Man, yeah. okay. Yeah. So know your numbers. Right? Yeah, very important. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Comment below in terms of how you how you operate and how you know your numbers. What system you use? Please comment below. We appreciate that. I want to follow up on the employee um, morale situation. Like, what do you do specifically to keep everybody super happy and not have them go somewhere else? Well, it's tough. You know, so some people are going to go somewhere else regardless if they have okay. new plans and whatnot. But with the team that you have here, I think it's important to you know, maybe do some activity. We had a company party at the end of the year where we, you know, brought some games nice. in and had some food. We have like an employee menu where, mm -hmm. you know, the food's on, you get a, a on meal house. per shift on the house. You know, start doing like maybe more specials. We do do that, you know, we have like hamburger days and stuff like that. But, and I think it's very important also to like have team meetings. So like life isn't difficult for like the switching shifts. You know, I think when you keep a nice workflow between different shifts coming in, it's also like, hey, you know, like, I like the organization here in terms of like how organized you are and how things just kind of flow. It's very different to show up at a shift, maybe at a restaurant where things aren't organized and you got to do the work for the prior shift. So you're you saying up. the team meeting at the shift change is crucial and very important. We don't quite do, do a team meeting in, during the shift change. Okay, we have like programs like WhatsApp with the group where we I share see. stuff. I but I think it's very important to you know leave everything set up for the next team coming in. Okay. For 2021, compared to 2020, how many employees did you hire last year? Uh, well, I know we had a total of 24 at one point in our wow. payroll, 24 employees, yeah. Where are you at now for this year? Right now, it's the slow part of the season, slow part of the year, winter time, I have uh, 19 people on payroll. And is the pay about the same over the last couple of years? Yes and no, I mean, every year, you know, the, the city has price increases, so every year it's, it's gone up. Okay. So, yeah, that's, that's something that's already kind of like tailored into you know, the workforce. and you remember your payroll uh, number per month? Yes, right before, uh, like when we were in the, in the top like part of the year, it's like 30,000 every two weeks, right around there. So 60 grand a month, 60 just on payroll alone? Yes. Wow, okay. Payroll takes about 34% um, of our revenue. Blitz time with Carlo. Carlo, let's fly through these. What's your favorite business book? Haven't read in a while, but I'm listening to a lot of podcasts. Uh, Restaurant Unstoppable. Okay. And an Upflip, of course, right? Upflip, of course, yeah. What would your ultimate business superpower be? Uh, multiply myself. <laughs> okay. Can you tell us about your most bizarre business encounter? I need to come back to that one. Okay. What's the craziest risk you've ever taken? Uh, jump into the restaurant, full-scale restaurant business, yeah. Why do you think only a handful of startups succeed? Don't have a clear business plan. Okay, this is from Corey Wright. Corey, thanks for your question. How has the pandemic impacted your business in the Seattle, Washington area? It pushed me to create a big patio, which actually served for a lot. 
Okay. This is from Hyperion Kennels. What was your biggest worry getting started that turned out not to be a big issue? Not having enough cash to build my patio. <laughs> okay. This is the same person. Do you ever do com commissary agreements with mobile food vendors as a side income? Not at this point. Okay. And then this is from Tanner Ray. Thank you, Tanner. How do you find a good location? How do you tell what a good location is for a restaurant? Maybe look into the prior places that have been there. This place for 20 years had failed, but I believe that a corner I can make work. But so it's been a food business or a food? 20 years, yeah. For 20 years, okay. A, a failure. Cool. Of places I've gone out of business. All right. You want to come back to the question on the uh, craziest, bizarre business encounter? Or are we done with that? They wanted us to serve 100 people in 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. And That's pretty crazy. I said, okay, we can do it, and we did it. Wow. Earlier in the video, we told you about a hack that you started talking and I kindly interrupted. So why don't we take this time and share with us, I think you said the word pillars. Yes. What do you mean by that and how did that change your business? So pillar, you know, uh, it's like a strength. It's something that, you know, solidifies an area or, you know, helps it keep it up. So um, it's about having like good pillars in each area. There's so many there's so many areas in a restaurant. You know, I have my kitchen, I have my bar, I have my service team. So finding the right people to be the lead in those areas okay. and be in charge of the training because you can't be everywhere. So it's very important to start delegating is like one of the most important things that I'm starting to be better at. So is that hard to do for some people? It's hard like to do, especially for me because I, I, <laughs> I, I love doing everything. I've, I created everything. It is hard to let go when you're so involved, when you're right. so hands-on. You know, I'm not somebody that was mainly an investor and said, hey, you guys figure it out. Like I've been creating these stations and areas throughout the process of growth. It's interesting that there's like the secret downfall in not delegating for the long-term growth. Yes, because you can't be right? everywhere. Like right. I said, my, my business superpower, I'd like to multiply myself so I could be, you know, in charge of all these areas maybe that I'm delegating, <laughs> you know, so. Okay. But uh, yeah. Awesome. It's not possible. There you go. So learn to delegate. <laughs> Colin, in terms of a food truck specifically, what systems do you use to keep track of inventory, scheduling, et cetera? Anything different? Well, now it's separate because I'm actually still using Square for the food truck I while see. we figure out a better way to integrate it maybe to our Clover system. So we've been using two POS systems, one dedicated only to the restaurant for mm -hmm. our online ordering and our processing system in, inside for tables and all that. And then our, our food truck's actually still running off a of Square while we figure out a few things. And through so that, that same platform? That's nice because it keeps it completely separate. Okay. Yeah. And through that platform, you're tracking inventory as well, food supplies or? Uh, yes and no. So no, not quite, we haven't really quite dialed in the, the, the inventory, but we have like a separate Excel sheet that we're still okay. doing it through that. So a little old school still. A little old school still. So I'm trying to get it all dialed in. Okay. And, yeah. How much do you spend currently on advertising? And if it's different uh, streams, what has the best ROI? On advertising right now, we're spending right around probably like six hundred to seven hundred dollars a month. Okay. Talking to my financial strategist, she says we can spend a lot more. Where's the six hundred going? Break it down. Uh, right now, we're doing like about two hundred and fifty for Google Ads. We're doing about two fifty for um, uh, Yelp. We're doing uh, other uh, Instagram posts that are sponsored, Facebook posts that are sponsored. So that's where our six hundred, seven hundred dollars go. Which ones do you find to bring you the most exposure and new customers? Looking at the Google Analytics, probably Google. I think Google is like the most just people used one. Yeah, like you put Peruvian food, boom, we pop up. Gotcha. You know, probably you, that one, and then. Do you do that yourself as well? Like handle that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I had people that were helping me out, but that right now it's pretty standardized. Where mm -hmm. I can just kind of like, you know, I got my focus groups, my focus areas of the city already dialed in, so mm -hmm. I kind of just play around with the amount of money I want to spend okay. each month, and just make sure that that focus didn't change from the area in Seattle to Bellingham. <laughs> you know, somehow just like moved. <laughs> like, why am I advertising to people in Bellingham? You know, <laughs> like, I need to be good. focused in, in the Seattle. Yeah. So you so. pick the uh, demographic area. Demographic area, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And that's that's just where the money's going. This that, yeah, okay. it's going to be thrown out on Luchin interface. Google makes it pretty easy. Have you seen an increase in in your operating expenses by how much? If you can share. And then, interestingly enough, which food, which food is more expensive, harder to get? Just interested to find out. Yes, it's definitely a, a real factor, especially for the restaurant industry. It was on the news just yesterday and like the week before. So I am trying to keep as much as I can uh, of it down. But it's, you know, like I said, uh, 25 pound a bag of onions used to go for $8, now it's 20. So it's Damn. like, how do, you, how do you battle that? That's crazy. You know? Like we use a lot of onions as the base of like almost all our dishes. Mm -hmm. 
So we need to pass that along to the consumer? I mean, uh, well, yeah, you need have to. to. Like right now, we're actually working on, on, on seeing where we're going to rise, raise our prices a little bit. And wow. uh, yeah, it's, it's something that's ine inevitable. Also, like cost of labor goes up every mm -hmm. year at the start of the year, you know, like it went from 15 to 15.75, I believe, if they're not making over $150 in tips per hour. I could be wrong on that, but it's right around that ballpark. And then you have, of course, your inflation. That'll affect your, your prices. Okay. Yeah. So you bring in chefs, guest chefs, to the restaurant, and they, yeah. they cook for you. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Is it how it helps you, them? What's the benefit to the restaurant? Yeah, so currently, uh, last year we had two uh, guest chefs that were coming in, one on Tuesday, one on Wednesday. How it benefits is that they're offering something new, and it also brings something new for our regulars that are coming mm -hmm. in and exciting. So like, for instance, uh, Tuesday we had a, a Peruvian chef, so he was doing different Peruvian dishes. His specialty is Japanese-Peruvian fusion called oh, BK Cuisine. And uh, he did that about for almost like two years, and now he has his own restaurant. That's cool. Senor Carbon, Pioneer Square, go visit them. Really <laughs> good food. Do. And then Wednesdays, we actually were doing something completely different. We're, we're teamed up with a Venezuelan couple, and we're doing kind of a fusion with them. So we're doing like That's a Peruvian cool. Venezuelan fusion, and then they're also putting out their Venezuelan menu. So on Wednesdays, people can come, you know, five to nine, you can find a complete different menu uh, that's presented from over there. That's awesome, because mm -hmm. as a regular maybe to this restaurant, to be able to come on a Wednesday or a Tuesday and experience a different you know, taste, that's pretty cool. I don't think yeah, you get that absolutely. at every restaurant. Absolutely. So. What's your major source of headaches right now as a business owner? Inflation. Mm -hmm. Very tough right now. And Maybe. how does that relate to you? Like, do you feel bad about having to raise prices or what else? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you know, you, you want to, I'm happy where, where the prices are, but you're forced to, you know, bump them up just because of what's going on with inflation and stuff. So nothing you control though, right? No, not at all. So it's okay. kind of, just got to keep tabs on it and make sure that as prices increase or maybe it's only for certain dishes you know so you need to know where you're gonna have to onions let's say I don't use onions for something and you know the prices haven't gone out up on sausages whatever right. so I know I don't have to raise anything there but you got to do your due diligence to know where you're actually spending your money with or that inflation is hurting you so got it how do you dedicate your time today what are you doing mostly as a business owner Restaurant um, operator. Yeah, so I'm still very much involved in, in all areas. Um, so, you know, in the morning time, I'll take some time to kind of look into the specials of the week that we can do, coordinate mm -hmm. with my chef, and, you know, what, what, what dishes are going to give us the most return, when to put them out, you know, when, when is it going to be adequate for our kitchen to take on specials of the week, you mm -hmm. know, what time frame. So, sure. think about that, marketing strategies, you know, like what do I want to post on social media and start creating kind of like a chronogram of during the week, like what I'm gonna post when for, for marketing purposes. So you're pretty involved still? Still very involved, still very hands-on, still spend at least like 12 hours a day working, 10 wow. 12 hours a day. For Whether you, it's me on my computer, you know, responding to emails or here on, on site. Man, that's a lot of time for a restaurant operator. I mean, which, at which point can you kind of step away and have a little bit more life? Just curious. Yeah, I, I have my days where I say, hey, today, you know, I leave everything in place mm -hmm. and, and, and then I, I know I have my, my day free but still you know if something goes wrong it's kind of like having a, a child right like you know you're never a really child <laughs> you're never really off the clock so if something happens something goes wrong like you're gonna hear about it if your manager can't right take care of it a so. child with 24 kids and 100 <laughs> clients <laughs> yes, yes to serve. Right. how long after you opened uh, did you wait to hire someone to manage your social media well, I still manage it. I still still do the majority of the work. I did hire somebody uh, to create content How during quick? the busy. Well, it was probably halfway in through the the, the restaurant. So like probably like seven months after Into I it? opened. Okay. Uh, I was too busy, so I had somebody that helped me create content, videos. Did, share more experience on that. Was it worth it? Do you still yeah, yeah. do that? Definitely, definitely. I think it's definitely worth it because you know you, I'm all over the place. I'm doing a bunch of stuff, and if you want to create the right content, it takes time. You know, so it's important to do that, I think, if you don't have the time. And you want to focus on what you're good at. Yeah, exactly. And delegate the rest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Carlo, this has been a, cra a crazy fun and interesting. It's been our third time, so we appreciate that. I know our fans and audience really appreciate you. You guys comment below. We read them. You will read them. We'll respond. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Great to see you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this incredible episode with Carlo, the owner of Don Lucho's. I hope you execute on everything we talked about. 
Thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel by liking, subscribing, and hitting that bell so that you don't miss any of our amazing content we generate for you guys.